What's up, guys? What's going on? How's everyone doing? Hope you're having a good day so far. So this is an interview that you might have seen before, but it's something that was requested for me to react to. There isn't too much to react to. It, I've seen this one before, but it is an interesting interview. And of course, anything regarding George Lucas is always very, very intellectual, and uh, you can learn from something. So let's land the ship, and then let's watch it. So we got the original one here. Um, you can find this if you type in James Cameron's story of science fiction, George Lucas clip. Let's get on with the review. In school, I was of the, I don't know, angry young man. Student. Sure, you were a so, rebel. Uh, I come out of anthropology. Yeah. So my focus is social systems. Right. And in Science fiction, you got two branches. One is science, yeah. and the other is social. Right. I'm much more of the 1984 kind of guy. Sure. I am. THX 1138. The, the, the spaceship guy. Yeah. The spaceship, I got into spaceships out of cars. Yeah. I love cars, I love going fast. Going fast. So I like spaceships. Yeah. But it isn't the science aliens and all that kind of stuff that I get focused on. It's the it's the how do the people react to all those things? And yeah. How do they accommodate them? Yeah. So that's the part that really fascinates me and I'm interested in. You did something very interesting with Star Wars, if you think about it. The good guys are the rebels. They're using asymmetric warfare against a highly organized empire. It's very interesting I if you didn't know this. I think we call those guys terrorists today. We call them Mujahideen, we call them Al-Qaeda. When I did it, they were Viet Cong. Exactly. So yeah. were you thinking of that at the time? Yes. So it was a very anti-authoritarian, very kind of 60s, against the man kind of thing, yeah, nested or, deep inside a, or, a, a fantasy. Or a colonial, you know, we're fighting the largest empire in the world. Right. And we're just a bunch of hayseeds in that's, coonskin hats that don't right. know nothing. That's right. And it was the same thing with the Vietnamese. Yep. The irony of that one is in, in both of those, the little, the little guys won. Right. And the big, highly technical Im the, empire. The English Empire. Right? English the English Empire, empire, the American Empire, yeah. lost. Yeah. That was the whole point. But that's a classic us not profiting from the lesson of history because you look at the inception of this country and it's very it's a very noble fight of the underdog against the massive empire. You look at the situation now where America's so The other inception of America where they took it from the Native Americans, but that's another discussion. So proud of being the biggest economy, the most powerful military force on the planet. It's become the empire in the per, from the perspective well, of a lot of people around the world. It was the empire during the Vietnam War. And what we never learned, you know, from England or Rome or, you know, a dozen other empire, empires, empires that fall. went on for hundreds of years or yeah. sometimes thousands of years, we never got it. We right. never said, well, wait, 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 this isn't the right thing to do. And we're still struggling with it. And they fall because of failure of leadership or, or, or government often. And Mostly you, know, it's you have a great line, which is, th th so this is how liberty dies. To we're in the middle of it right now. To thunder of the Sith. Exactly. It's the po it's, you were, it was a condemnation of populism. That's what Padme said. In a science fiction context. That's a theme that runs all the way through Star Wars. Yeah. I think science fiction is so good at these kind of social themes. Yeah, the great thing about Star Wars is I had a, a thing, I mean, a, a, a vessel that I could throw anything into. Yeah. But one of the biggest problems you have in science fiction with movies, they don't have it in books or anything, but in movies, you have to create a real world. Yeah. And it's a real world that doesn't exist. Yeah. And you have to do what I, what Kurosawa used to say is, it has to have immaculate reality. Yeah. Even though it's not real. I like real. that term. Yeah. So, it's super interesting. What I find about his overall theme with Star Wars is that there was this theme that and I think 
Look, Star Wars is great, and I, I attribute some of its success, or a large portion of its success, to how relatable it is to everyone. So we take, you know, separate characters of uh, Luke Skywalker, Leia, Han Solo. You can find those kind of people with every single person in the world. However, there is a common theme, which is that it's the little guy against the big guy. And that is extremely relatable just, you know, by each character they have their own story. But as a whole, it's also relatable to us as regular people, you, me, always against, you know, a bigger entity, a bully, a corporation, or whatever it might be that will try to suppress us or oppress us or whatever it might be that doesn't allow us to live our life with the rights that we were given. So I think that's something that Star Wars really hits uh, the nail on the head with really, really well and something that maybe a lot of people don't really realize. I know a lot of new fans don't realize, but it is a story about a rebellion and this idea of the terrorists being the rebellion are the ones that are fighting fighting against the big guy and giving it to the man so Star Wars is extremely political and if you even look at a lot of the um, from the prequels especially if you look at a lot of the characters you can match their accents to you know the country that they would belong to today and I always thought that was something very interesting within Star Wars itself because it's extremely political and George is very smart. <laughs> so um, that's all I wanted to say about this. I think it's a great interview and I hope you guys got a little bit of insight on it from George's words and maybe my little explanation as well. Uh, we're going to do a KOTOR stream today, I believe, at some point. I just got to make a Cobra Kai theory video. Uh, so until I do that, I will see you guys probably in a little bit, probably in a few hours here. Uh, Timify, like Robin Hood, exactly, like Robin Hood. And that's one reason why Robin Hood is so relatable to every character and every every person, I would say, because he's taking, excuse me, he's taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor. And while stealing is never a good thing, it's always a noble cause. And we aren't, you know, the rich, as in the entities of these massive uh, corporations that are, you know, taking over the world and controlling everything that we do. Uh, what was I going to say here? Conspiracy theory. <laughs> it's a new channel. Um, the politics of Star Wars is similar in many ways of historical politics. Yeah, and you have to realize that when Star Wars came out, it was a lot about the Viet Cong. You know, it was a, a lot about not the Yuuzhan Vong, but the Viet Cong, um, which was in George's time, you know, 60s and 70s, when George made this movie, was a reflection on the times of that era, which is something that he says. So... And then, of course, you know, the, the liberation of America from the British and all that and how it's always been the little guy fighting against the bigger force, the bigger power that's trying to, you know, capture them. Um, it's very relatable. It's all great stuff. Very David and Goliath kind of story. Absolutely. And Han Solo, I think, is one of the most relatable characters because he is the guy that's kind of outrunning the the empire and pushing the boundaries in every sort of way where he's just uh he is a bit of a scoundrel but you know what that doesn't mean you're a bad person necessarily and then you got luke skywalker who's always looking towards the horizon always trying to find his next adventure sort of thing you know when he you know he's looking at the twin sons he didn't know who he was and he was trying to find himself at that point and then he eventually did and became, you know, uh, a Jedi, a Padawan, I guess, to Yoda, and then a Jedi Knight. You know, he lost to his father and came back stronger and just won over the galaxy by the help of his dad, of course. So, have a great day. That's all I wanted to say. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm more relatable to Chewie. Fair enough. All right. <laughs>